Okay, welcome to example six in our matrices topic. If you haven't watched example five, I'd suggest you do so. <clears throat> We're talking about determinants. So the determinant of a matrix is a kind of special number that we can work out. It helps to define a few characteristics of a matrix. The two by two matrices are kind of easy to find their determinants. Three by three, not so uh, easy as shown by the actual formula that we might use if we could be bothered actually trying to learn it, but there's no point. What I'm going to show you is a kind of pattern that we can use to work out the, the determinant of an individual uh, matrix. So we're going to start off with, with the determinant, I'll show it over here, the determinant of matrix A is the first element at the top, row one, column one, we're going to, whatever that number is, write it down, and then we're going to actually draw a pair of parallel lines and we're going to write in a two by two matrix here. Now, what elements from here go in this two by two matrix? It's basically all the elements that don't lie in the row or column that that A is in. In other words, E, F, H, and I, and we're going to write it like that. E, F, H, and I. Well, now, you're going to write down numbers, okay? Now, there's the, the next one, although we usually think about adding everything together, there's a little reason why we're going to make this uh, minus. And the reason for that is that uh, we, we think about moving along to B this time. So we're going to multiply through by B. Um, oops, let's not make it purple. Let's just make it red with everything else. So we're going to multiply through by B and then multiply B by a 2 by 2 matrix determinant which is going to be not in the row column of B. So let's have a look at that. There's B, which means we can't use them or them. So you can see here we've got D, G, F, and I. Now, <coughs> excuse me, um, effectively we want to, it's easier for us to write down them in that order, D, F, G, and I. But suffice to say that if you do that, you're going to get the negative of what you should get. Okay, so instead of adding, uh, we end up subtracting to take account of the fact that this is technically uh, not going to give us the right answer. So there's a complicated uh, version of why that is. You can look it up elsewhere, but I'm saying to you, just make it a subtraction. I've got B multiplied by the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix, D, F, G, I. And we're going to add to that the element C. So we're going to, each time you take the top, the element on the top row of the matrix, and we'll have a look at uh, C. So if we think about C here, we are going to discount, oops, we can discount A and B and F and I. I think it's not liking my little dots that I'm drawing. So I've got D, E, G, and H. So D, E, G, and H. And notice that these parallel lines mean we've got a determinant to work out. So that's why if I were to say it's A multiplied by this determinant, which is actually EI minus FH minus B times, the determinant of this is DI minus FG plus C times the determinant in here is DH minus EG you can see that that's actually, I've written out this formula, which uh, would be difficult to memorize. So we're just thinking about the positional aspect of it. Okay, let's do it with actual numbers here. Find the determinant of M when M is this here. So if we want to find the determinant of M, I'm going to use parallel lines. Determinant of M is equal to so get the first number two. It's going to be two times. Here's my two by two matrix determinant. That's why I've got parallel lines there. And I'm going to use these four numbers here. Five, two, negative three, zero in that order. Five, two, negative three, zero. Remember there's a minus sign. And then we're going to take the next number up here, which is one. You can put that in or not. I'm going to do that just to remind myself that it's there. Now, the, I can't use anything in the same row or column as the 1. So I've got a 1, 2, negative 1, 0 in that order. 1, 2, negative 1, 
and 0. And then I'm going to add the last term, which happens to be a negative 2. Um, so although I could, I could just have written minus 2 for this example, I'm just going to remind myself that it, we're adding that last one. And there's negative 2, so I can't use anything in that row of columns. I'm using 1, 5, negative 1, and negative 3. 1, 5, negative 1, and negative 3. Okay, so that's the way I can position all of the different numbers. I can go ahead and then work out what those determinants are, either by writing them down just the answer or a bit of a calculation. I'm going to take it in stages here. So looking at that 2 by 2 matrix, 5 times 0 is 0, minus negative 1. No, it's negative 3, isn't it? Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. The main mistake people make in this is that they try and do too much in their head and sometimes they get negative numbers in here and they forget about that we're subtracting and stuff. So it's, it's often worthwhile just to take a line to work out the determinant elements here. In the second 2 by 2 matrix, that 1 times 0 is 0 again, minus 1, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. And then I've got minus 2 times... Uh, and my determinant here, 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Subtract, negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. Simplify that. That gives me 2 times 6 minus, I've just got positive 2 there. And then I've got minus 2 times negative 3. Subtract negative 5 is positive 2. So I've got that. This gives me 12 minus 2, minus 4, the answer is 6. The determinant of this matrix here is 6. Okay, so you could do it in less uh, lines than that, depending on your confidence at various stages of it, but that's, you know, you can do every step along the way. If it helps you get the right answer, it's worth putting down. Okay, so take that format, you go away and practice it until you get them all right.